Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Merle Farms. Uh, well, it, it's afternoon, as you can tell. Sorry I haven't been recording the past couple days. Uh, we've been bailing until about 3 o'clock in the morning, waking up at 5 and bailing some more. And it's uh, very tiring, and I didn't feel like filming. So, anyway, bailed this morning, so today uh, went up there to my pivot, and I got a couple of flat tires, so I was going to film that for y'all. and give y'all a little crop update on some stuff and yeah so right now I'm gonna load up the Can-Am and get my uh, floor jack so I could get that sprinkler tire changed and in my silo I have a spare tire that I always use so I can put the floor jack on the spare tire and then jack it up so I'm gonna get all that loaded up and we'll head head north. Okay. So we're out here at Wayside. We do have the plow here. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. To plow this little weedy mess. But let's make Kirk comes first. So this is where we put our my old pivot at. Make sure there's no snakes up here. And I'm just gonna have to put a, try to find a good tire or an okay old one to uh, put on that pivot for today. I got a new one sitting in town, but that's about 60 miles away. Don't really feel like driving 60 miles out of the way to get a sprinkler tire when I got plenty here. So. I think I remember having a couple down here. Cause I've only used two of them and I had about six good ones that were still on the sprinkler and we put them in a pile. I think it's this one. Well, that one's still aired up. That one looks a little better. I'll probably drive down here and get that one. That one looks better. So, anyway, I'm gonna get that loaded up. And then I'll show y'all what I'm working with. So yeah, I tried to get it back in flat ground where I didn't have to hike in there or whatever, but that didn't work as I wanted it to so this is what we're doing and it's about a hundred degrees today they are calling for some pretty good rain starting tomorrow and so we'll see how that goes hopefully it'll be good hopefully we can get some good rain and won't have to do nothing for a while that's what I'm hoping for but we'll find out okay shovel marks the pivot it was at. So, the pivot did run out into the plowed ground a little bit, which is why I parked so far away. And this was as close as I could get it. It was way off in there and it actually came all the way back. And then it got stuck on that tower. So, get the Can-Am out, load all my stuff into the Can-Am, get my tire, and uh, I'll probably wait to put that tire on until I get the other tire off, get the other tire dragged out, and then I can roll that one in. And then, uh, yeah, change the sprinkler tire and probably go clean out some more nozzles. I just started this pivot yesterday, so kind of sucks, but it is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. So I'm going to load my jack up, my spare tire, put my boots on. Get my impact. I forgot what socket it takes, so take me a couple sockets. But I mean, if I have to walk back, it's 20 yards. So do all that, and then I'll I'll see y'all at the pivot. So I don't want to make it too boring. Yeah, let's do it. I guess.
Okay. So that tire's out. I used the winch or hook the winch up to the tire and drag it out right there. Messed up a little cotton, but not too much. Not too worried about it. It's only 20 yards, so. Now I'm gonna roll that one in there. Hopefully everything fits. That way I could just go in there, bolt it all up, and uh, call her a day. And then go get on the plow. So, we'll see. We'll see how it works. I hope it works.
All right, so got all that done. Uh, I'm gonna leave that muddy tire here till tomorrow when I don't, when I can put my spikes on my truck. And then I can take it to town and get the tire fixed and everything. So then next time this pivot is in this plowed field, I can, uh, uh, I can take it to the tire shop, get a new tire put on it, and the next time this pivot's in the plowed field, I'll put the good one back on it, so that way I don't have no problems after that. But anyway, so I got all that done, and while I'm messing with the pivot, that well right over there needs a new sight glass. I noticed that this morning when I actually came and checked on the pivot and it was not stuck then, so I don't know what it hit, but it hit something and made me get a flat tire. But anyway, so luckily I got a sight glass in my pickup that'll fit on it. That's the sight glass for it. So I'll put that sight glass on and then the pivot to my south, or the well to my south, it's not working. There's a disconnect, which I'll show you. And I think somebody came over here and turned my disconnect off. I think somebody's been messing with my pivot a little bit because uh, random hours of the day, it'll just turn off. And when I come up here, it's turned off at the pivot. It's not, nothing's wrong with it. So I think somebody's been coming out here and messing with my pivot. So I'm about to put a game camera up and uh, figure out who's doing that. But anyway, load all this back up and I'll go fix that well right quick and then yeah okay like I said I'm gonna leave that tire until uh, tomorrow when I don't have a uh, trailer on so I can pick it up with my bell spikes and she'll be good but yeah Hopefully it'll run now. I'm gonna fix this well, get this well turned on so some water will start going in that pit. And then I'll probably wait till it kind of cools off a little bit to start the pivot, so. And let it fill up with water a little bit. Anyway, I'll see y'all when I start working on that, that well. Okay, so we're at the pivot, or the well, not the pivot. Sorry. See how it's cracked right there? So, was letting water in. Got the new one. This is a side glass, so you can see the water coming through. I'll show y'all when I get it started. And then, gotta find me a half inch. Take my pry bar out. I, I really gotta redo this toolbox. Uh, yeah. That's 11 sixteens. That's a 13. I know I got a half inch in here somewhere. What is that one? That... 7 sixteens. I think that's actually the one. Yep. And I did come spray these weeds, that's why they're dead. I came and did that. Oh, what was it? Last week? I think it was last week. This is when I came and did that. On this well, I got everything sprayed except for one well, and that one well is getting out of hand, so I'm gonna go buy me a a little tank. That way I can put my uh, put it on my can am and I can come out here and spray every time it needs sprayed instead of waiting for a tank to get available from my brother and my dad. I can just come do it myself. My brother tends to keep up with his a lot better, so his is never never available. So I'm gonna go buy my own and make it to where I don't have this many weeds growing up every year.
I'll show y'all what I'm doing. So I'm taking these three uh, bolts loose. You'll take them loose. And you gotta take them all out. Ooh, that beetle scared me. Take them all out. One bolt, two bolt, three bolt, boom. This is going to take some figuring out. And hey, if a Milwaukee person or sees this video, Milwaukee needs to make a, a hammer kind of like Snap-on does. I'd buy that in a heartbeat. Because this hammer I have right now, you know. Anyway, I usually keep these and I usually keep the bolts. Because I go to some sometimes the bolt will break off of these, and that's all that it is. So that's what I keep. I got a lot of those bolts and everything sitting at the house. I just don't have them with me.
I'll show you how I put this on too. So I learned from my dad. My dad always taught me. He has an air one of these. I got me a battery powered cause I like battery, I like Milwaukee tools and that was a Milwaukee tool so that's what I got. But you can get one of those little grinders. I'll show you what I do with it. All my batteries fell out, of course. It works. But like I said, he does this with a, with an air power and I do it with battery. I'll be right back. Okay, anyways, use this. Oh, see if I could do this with one hand. I can see, can't y'all? Yeah. Go across here. Use it just like that. And you want to smooth this up. Because it makes it easier for these little rubber pieces to go on there. If that makes sense. So, let me do that and I'll be right back. Then when you get all that. Oh, my shoe came off again. Dang. I need to get new shoes. When you get all that done. Another trick of the trade. Oh, man. Where's that? Another trick of the trade is to shoot some grease on it. Helps it seal up better, creates, solves any bubbles you have in it, and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna throw some grease on it, put it back together. some grease on it just like oh no battery <laughs> oh. just like work there you go You do get a little greasy doing this, but rub it around, get it all. Yeah. Like I said, you do get a little greasy, but I carry shop towels with me, so. Cause I'm the, the one that does all the pivot stuff. Get these, put the extra grease you got on your hands around that. And there she goes, she slides on pretty easy after that. Get a little bit more grease. Clean my hands. Get this, you wanna get this, oh shit. 
Now you want to get this little rubber peat. Ah, focus, focus. There we go. You want to get this little rubber piece on pre a pretty good ways, so that way you could you'll get the whole thing on there. And see how that that grease is coming out. That's what you want. See how much easier that is to put on after I put that grease. And I just realized I did it the wrong way. So, I forgot to put these on it before I, I did that. Stupid. Let me just take those off. Now I'll put that on it. And this. There we go. fine because it still has the grease on it and it's still easy to put those gaskets on put the new side glass on Push that over. Should fit perfect. There we go. Move those in. Move the. I don't really want to touch the camera with greasy hands. So you move the little rubber pieces where they should go. Make sure the sight glass is pretty well lined up. Uh, Usually the rule of thumb is to get it lined up, just like everything else. Come on. Like I said, everybody has their own different way of doing stuff. That's how I was taught, so that's how I do it. Come over here, turn the power on. I'm gonna need two hands for this one. sound good at all. Let's see if it starts actually pumping water or not. You see the water in there just a tad bit? Water's coming out of there. And usually what I do since this one this one has cow water, that's how I wash my hands when I get all that grease on it. And also, we're expecting some wind, so I'm actually going to let that cow water, this tank, fill up a little bit. So, I'll see y'all when the tank fills up. And that's going to take a minute to fill up. Uh, in the winter, I have it on a, on a little, oh, what do we call it? We call it a float. I don't know what everybody else calls it, but that's what we call it. So I have it on a float switch, and uh, so it just sits there and runs every time. So while that's filling up, I'm gonna go start the pivot and see if it'll actually move. Otherwise, I'll be coming back to turn that off. 